Hello again. This is the last teaching of 2011. Hasn't this year flown by? For the last two months I've been teaching on the parable of the sower and fruitfulness. Trees with shallow roots and growing perfect fruit. So for this month's teaching I want to focus upon God's royal family. You may not immediately see the connection with fruitfulness but you will as you keep listening. On his last visit to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, just a few days before the crucifixion, Jesus was in the temple and once again, as he had done three years previously, he threw out the money changers and the traders. This infuriated the Jews, the Jewish leaders, and he made them even madder by healing people in the temple, healed the blind and the lame. Now, it'd be good if you had Matthew 21 in front of you, and uh, starting at verse 12. Healing the blind and the lame is verse 14. The children in the temple were shouting Hosanna and praising him. And this really made the Jewish leaders even worse in a rage about his presence in their stronghold. So they wanted to come up with a strategy to trap him and to kill him. So they asked him a question, verse 23, by what authority do you do these things? You come into our temple, you throw out the traders, you heal in the temple and you receive praise in our temple. By what authority do you do this? Now, three years earlier at the same feast, Jesus had already told them plainly that it was his father who had given him authority. You can read this in John 5. And his miracles verified that his authority really did come from God. And he was not going to explain it all over again. So he, in return, asked the Jewish leaders a question of his own. Was John's baptism from heaven or from men? They couldn't answer. That's in verse 23 to 27 of Matthew 21. The Jewish leaders were shown to be hypocritical and Jesus then went on to teach three parables. The parable of the two sons, the wicked husbandman and the marriage feast. And all three parables basically showed how the Jewish nation stubbornly refused to accept Jesus and to give him the honour which was rightfully his. Now, I want to focus on the middle parable, the parable of the wicked husbandmen or tenants. The Lord of the vineyard is God the Father. The husbandmen who tended the vines were the religious leaders of the Jews, and the vineyard is the kingdom of God. The husbandmen were supposed to cultivate the vines and grow good fruit. And at harvest time, the Lord of the vineyard wanted the fruit which was rightfully his. But the wicked tenant farmers killed both the servants, who were probably the prophets that God had sent, and then his son. And Jesus, of course, was the son. The servants and the son were sent to collect the harvest. And Jesus, in that teaching, referred to a prophecy of David from Psalm 118, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head, stone of the corner. Now, what did Jesus say that the Lord of the vineyard would do to these wicked men? What would be their punishment? He made it very clear. Now, this is the key verse. I'm reading it from the New Living Translation. Matthew 21, verse 43. I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce the proper fruit. Now, the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders, knew that he was talking about them. And in Luke's account of the same uh, incident, in Luke chapter 20, the religious leaders said to him, threatening them to do this, they said, God forbid, take away our authority and give it to another nation. 
give God's affairs and the running of his kingdom to a new nation? Can you imagine the Jewish response? A new nation. Now, Peter was there. Peter heard all this. He was an eyewitness on the day. So when he wrote his own epistle, he again quoted what Jesus had said from Psalm 118, underlying that Jesus was the stone that the builders rejected. That's in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 7 and 8. But then, if you turn to 1 Peter 2, you'll see that he said this. In verses 9 and 10, he said, But you, unlike the Jewish leaders, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. In time past, you were not a people, but now we are the people of God. The wonderful truth is that the true Christian church is now that holy nation in charge of the kingdom of God. And the Christian church is multicultural and multinational. In Revelation 5, when the joyful song in heaven was being sung, this is what's written in uh, Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. With your blood, you purchase men from every tribe and people and nation, and you made them into a kingdom, a royal race, priests to God, and they shall rule as kings over the earth. Now, if you are born again, you are in God's royal family. And this is talking about you. It's talking about me. It's talking about you. It doesn't matter what your nationality is on your identity card or your passport. Paul wrote in Galatians 3, there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond or free, male or female. You're all one in Christ. So, as that new nation, what is expected of us? As the church of Christ, what fruit are we responsible for? What are we supposed to be cultivating? Well, as we have previously studied, the Father wants perfect fruit. That was in Luke 8, 14. So, first of all, our lives need to reflect to the world the character of Christ. The fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control as recorded in Galatians 5 but it's not only in our character that we should be fruitful notice when the apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth as he was encouraging them to give an offering to the poor saints of Jerusalem Paul wrote this he said and God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifest in active goodness, kindness and charity. That's 2 Corinthians 9.10. So fruitfulness is also active goodness, active kindness and active charity. God wants us to be active in his service. So this godly fruit should show in our lives, in changed character, and also in our service. Let's not disappoint our Heavenly Father. He has now given the kingdom of God to the church. We are his royal household, and producing such fruit shows that we are Christ's true disciples, and we bring glory and honour to the Father as Jesus said in John 15. So it's a big task, being fruitful as a member of God's royal family. I wish you a very happy new year as we come to the end of this year. Happy Christmas, happy new year. And I hope you've enjoyed this teaching. Rejoice in the fact that as a born again child of God, you are in God's royal family. And let's be fruitful together. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for listening.